Yo YouTube, what's going on? It's your boy Salvation Lee. We are back with another video, guys. And today it's the CWL Anaheim predictions preview type deal here. So basically, we're just talking CWL Anaheim, potential outcomes, the news, everything CWL Anaheim and the Pro League moving forward. So about as simple as that. Before we get into actual predictions or whatever, I just want to talk about the little bit of the news. So Splice basically announced that they're subbing Nolson in for accuracy. And basically the rumors going around or like the, the buzz around this move was more than likely people keep people are getting a little excited because they think Aqua is trying to get used to using an ICR before they try to go get gunless in roster mania next week, which is a decent rumor. And I actually kind of believe it. So, I mean, out of all the teams that could potentially get gunless splice probably makes the most sense where a team like if you can pair temp and gunless together, I don't know what it would take to get gunless from LG at this point. If depending on what the whole situation is and how how vote and how vocal gunless will be about the situation but splice is the team that makes the most sense for gunless right now at this point and that move kind of aligns it feels like if you guys follow the nba it kind of feels like kyrie in the nets right now where like the nets are trying to make cap space to sign a player blah blah kyrie's in new york but anyway if you guys are nba fans and follow that you guys would kind of understand but that's kind of like the the parallel right now but anyway just have to keep that on the radar for this predictions video or this uh, preview video for Anaheim because uh, it does definitely affect Splice and how they could potentially perform at this tournament and definitely makes me less confident in what Splice can do during the tournament. First of all, let's just address the pools for Anaheim right off the rip. So we got pool A, pool B, pool C, pool D right there as you guys are seeing right here on the screen. And at first rip, right when you, right when you glance at it, it, the pools don't look that crazy and it doesn't necessarily look like there's a pool of death. Three weeks ago or like a month ago, You'd look at Pool D and you'd be like, what? Pool D stacked. Like, that's what you would have thought like three weeks ago. But right now, I mean, Envy and Luminosity have played terrible lately. Gen G's been on the downslide. And so it's it's hard to say that Pool D is the team of death. But like by brands and by team and by players and talent, you'd think Pool D will of death. But I wouldn't necessarily say there is a Pool of death. I mean, Blyce right now kind of on the downswing. Mid-96 with Pool C. Eh. Pool A, Optic, EG, Denial, Heretics, maybe. Pool B is pretty simple as well. So nothing off the rip is that crazy like when it comes to Pool of Death. And what a lot of people have been talking about and it's pretty obvious is that basically each of the four favorites, which is kind of how this was supposed to be set up, the four favorites are in four different pools. So Optic, FaZe, 100 Thieves, and E United are all in different pools and those are undoubtedly when it comes to favorites the four favorites for this tournament and i mean we, i guess we can kind of transition our, our talk into who the favorites could potentially be for this tournament and undoubtedly those four are the four favorites so now we just need to decide well which one is actually the favorite the debate has really been between whether or not 100 thieves or e united is the favorite but it's weird because i actually kind of feel like optic is being it seems impossible that optic can be slept on but only slightly minimally slept on like just a little bit because it's just i just think it's just recency bias considering that they played in the first heat of the pro league you know it's a little bit of recency bias considering we've seen united and 100 thieves more recently but esports pedia actually just released their power rankings for anaheim in the the picture is not that great because it's kind of like misaligned or whatever but the rankings they put out was actually 100 Thieves at 1, United at 2, Optic at 3, and FaZe at 4. And I think it's pretty undisputed that 100 Thieves, United, and Optic would be the top 3. Maybe not necessarily in that order. But basically, everybody agrees that that's the top 3 teams for this event. There definitely is dispute about whether or not 100 Thieves or United is currently the better team and should be favored going into Anaheim. Personally, I think 100 Thieves deserves to be favored. I mean, they did beat 100 Thieves in Pro League and... But Optic Gaming, as great as they are, I just think these few weeks off might have a little bit of an effect on the momentum they have versus the teams that just recently played with E United rolling in with quite a bit of momentum. And based off of uh, the pools that United has versus Optics, United is, I think, a little bit easier. And so overall, I think United deserves to be favored just slightly over 100 Thieves and just slightly over Optic. And I would, I would say it's United, 100 Thieves, Optic, then FaZe. But just how these brackets are set up and how the pools are set up, there's potential for a lot of really interesting matchups early on in the bracket. All it takes is for one of those top four teams to end up being the number two seed in the pool, and you're going to have a really good matchup right off the rip. We can see Optic or FaZe or United and 100 Thieves play in the first round of Winner's Finals if just one of those teams in each of those respective matchups were to finish in second in their pool. So... 
I mean, there is, again, lots of potential for some wild matchups early on, which could throw a huge wrench in the tournament and how those teams move forward through the winner's bracket. That is absolutely something to look out for, and that's why finishing first in the pool will be so important for all of these teams, because it really will have a huge impact in how tough that first matchup is with how these teams are currently lined up. It seems incredibly unlikely that a team that's not Optic, FaZe, United, or 100 Thieves wins the tournament. I mean... Maybe you're looking at, you know, Reciprocity, you're looking at Gen G, you're looking at a run from Envy or LG or Heretics, EG, I don't know. Like Splice now is looking a little, little iffy. So it, it, overall that it just seems just, you know, less likely in all aspects that a team outside of that top four does win it. But you never know, you never can put it past Call of Duty for having some wild runs and upsets and early on in tournaments. So again, it, it's impossible to know, but if I had to bet, if I was a betting man, I would be shocked if one of those four teams doesn't win. But really what gets me most hyped about this tournament is the fact that Roster Mania opens up the day after the tournament. So next week is Roster Mania. And because this is the last Roster Mania of the year, there's going to be a lot of wild transactions. There should be a lot of action. And specifically, there's, you know, we're still waiting on Optic news, whether or not that could be wild. If that is the situation where they're selling off their players because of the whole Immortals thing, who knows? But that's the last roster lock of the year before champs, before playoffs, before whatever. And of course, we've got gunless. We've got a lot of other things. So, I mean, again, this roster needs to be pretty wild. And there's a lot of teams that you have to watch out for at Anaheim that's going to have a massive effect moving into roster mania. And there's some players specifically two that I want to talk about, Brack and Skies, because those two guys, if they really show up and play well at Anaheim, they've already been playing well in the pro league. But if they play well at Anaheim, which will add on to their value already, I mean, they, they could be pretty high-profile additions to some pretty high-profile teams perceive them moving into roster mania. So, I mean, again, overall, there's a lot on the line it, at Anaheim. It's going to have a massive effect moving into roster mania and then, of course, then into the Pro League playoffs and into champs. So, if you guys enjoyed the video, like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. Share the video if you guys really enjoyed it. But, but again, I always appreciate the support, the comments, the likes, the shares, whatever it is. I really do appreciate all, all the, the support. Check me out on Twitter if you guys want to stay updated for Anaheim. I'll be there. I'm a ref for MLG. As many of you guys know, I talk about it pretty often in the videos to keep, make sure everybody knows about it. Um, but anyway, I'll be at Anaheim. So if you guys are at Anaheim, hit me up. Say hi. I'll, I Obviously, I love talking to you guys. So, uh, you know, show up, show out. And hopefully, I can meet some of you guys there. But as always, guys, your voice is and we'll see you next time. I'm out.